Hey everybody, Alden Roth here. I am uh, trying to um, start an Instagram live here with my friend Dan Helbling. So let me see if I can uh, get him on here. So tonight we're gonna talk about, um, let's see, there Dan is. All right. Hello, Alden. Hey, Dan. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Ooh, good, but my camera can't figure this out. Yeah, you turned around and you got you got right out of focus. Yeah. What's happening? There we this go. There's someone who's about to start talking about cameras. Yeah, well, it's, uh, I don't have that much, that much control over the camera. I'm trying to get the background video here to loop. Oh, yeah. I forgot to do that, so if it doesn't loop, you uh, let me know. But <laughs> Okay. All right. Dan and I are here and uh, we're going to dive into our process of making music videos for Gabe McDeal. Yeah. Absolutely. We've made music videos for lots of other people, both together and apart, but the ones with Gabe are kind of unique because they're definitely a marketing piece for him as a car salesman. So we wanted to dive into that whole process and just talk things out. So, yep. Um, I'm Alden Roth, in case anybody doesn't know that for some reason. I am a filmmaker, rock climber, runner, do a bunch of things. Um, but yeah, I'm here to try to spread some knowledge. So Dan, do you want to give a little intro? Sure. Yeah. I'm Dan Helbling. Um, I am also a video creator, uh, but I also specialize in motion graphics animation. Um, and, you know, in my free time, I generally am trying to focus on YouTube right now. So not a lot of rock climbing for me at the moment. Not a lot of our clients for me either. You know, it's all not for a lot. But cool. So um, we went to the same college as Gabe. Actually, we we all three went to Point Park, and Dan and I had previously done work with Gabe. Um, he he used to run a nonprofit called Do a Pro in the Game of Life, which was about teaching kids basketball, but also incorporating reading and how important that is. Um, hey, Christina, what's up? How you doing? Um, so we had made a video about his nonprofit and had a good relationship there. Um, and then a few years later, aka last year, Gabe came in and wanted to make music videos and Dan sent me just a random Facebook post about it. And I was like, oh yeah, we could do that for sure. So we, uh, we hit Gabe up and he was like, yeah, I loved working with you guys. Let's do this again. So that was that was uh, pretty much it um he his original idea which i think is still the current idea is to do a song about each of the different brands that cochrane sells so they have 20 or 21 different brands under their umbrella and we have so far done six videos that have encompassed a little bit more than six brands but yeah but we've done a lot of them we focus on four brands specifically right. Four brands right the other two were coveralls, I think. Right. The Cochrane, Co or Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram had four because they oh. usually they usually put all four of those brands in one, um, in one dealership. Hannah asked, "What's a Cochrane? Cochrane, that, aka number one Cochrane, is the dealership that Gabe sells cars through. Um, so yeah, they are they're pretty big here in southwestern PA. Yes. Ooh, we got a bunch of people joining now. We got Austin. I can't yeah. tell this is here. But, yeah, that's Austin. Great. So um, let's see. Dan, before we dive in, what's what's been your favorite video? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, the last one. Car sales drip for sure. Yeah. Um, I feel like that was one of the ones that we really, both of us kind of just broke our styles out, like full force. Um and there, there's just particularly a lot of effects in there that I like the most and are absolutely on my reel as we speak. Yeah. Um, so car sales drip was just a, like, it was like a harmony of what Gabe brought to the table, what you brought to the table and what I brought to the table. So that's by far my favorite one so far. Yeah, definitely. I, I have to agree because it was, it was just a much bigger production. There were so many moving parts that we actually got to you know, dive in and make what was more, more than just your average music video. But we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, so tonight we're going to go through the whole process. We'll go through pre-production, 
uh, regular production, post-production distribution, and then also a little bit of the business relationship of working with Gabe and what you can do if you're looking to get into music videos or really generally any kind of video production. Mm -hmm. um, so it starts out with, you know, Gabe will send us the songs that he's, that he's made. He usually works with um, some different music producers and beat makers to get beats. And then he obviously raps. He writes all his own music. He's very proud of that. And he's, he's pretty good. So um, he will send us the songs. We'll brainstorm ideas. Sometimes he'll also have ideas to send over um, to us. Like he, he Gabe was the one to initially be like, he wanted animations in all the videos. That's not something that you normally get with an artist because they usually know that animations are out, out of their price tag. Um, but yeah, so Gabe will send a couple ideas as well. And then um, we go on location scout. And so that's, that's always very interesting because we, get to go to the car dealership and sort of see a side of the dealership that you might not see. We like go into the bays where they do all of the uh, mechanic stuff, all of the maintenance and all that. And so that's, it's always interesting. And then not all car dealerships are created equal. Some of them are like really cool, have these big glass windows and other ones are just not, not as, not as pretty. Low sunken ceilings, horrible recessed can lighting. Right. Right. Just yeah. Kind of power. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the some of the Nissan shots we had to like go into the lower level storage where oh. they where they had some of the cars because they don't keep all they they keep certain cars up top where they sell those that that um, model more frequently. So yeah. Some of the trucks we had to like go into the depths to find them. It, or if the trucks aren't even there, or if they don't right. have the model that he is supposed to be rapping about, because often like when they when he sells a car, it's not necessarily on lot. So like the one he's talking about might be at a different like location. They have to bring it to him or something. Yeah, so exactly. we, there, those, there was one in the Nissan video. We had to go to a completely different dealership that he didn't work at, but that cop renowned to, yeah. to find a specific van that he rapped about. And so that's why when he raps about that van, it's just a shot of that van because Gabe wasn't <laughs> actually there. But, all right. So then, um, we don't do a ton of shot listing for these music videos because of the nature of the shoot. We Gabe only has really one day off. Cochran sells cars Monday through Saturday. I believe they take Sunday off. And so then everybody gets Sunday off, but the car sales and they only get one other day off, and that is Friday for Gabe. So we usually have about half the day on Friday to get in there and shoot the whole thing. So Hannah asked, what is shot listing? Dan, do you want to? You want to tackle that one? Shot listing is, it is important. I have preached it uh, for any shoot I've ever been on. Um, the director and DP sh well, should absolutely come together and make a shot list. And a shot list is, it is literally exactly what it is. It is a list with all of the shots that you want to cover um, in a given production, uh, specifically to the day. Um, so going from making sure you get your wide shot to your close up shots to the inserts that you want to get. So, um, and I think the reason that we didn't shot list was because I don't, I don't think it's your style. First of all, you don't shot list a lot, correct? Yeah. I, I mean, I'm usually shooting things more run and gun documentary style to begin with. And so when we only had, you know, three or four hours at each of these locations, it was like, well, we'll just get in there. And like, we'd already seen it. So we had a few ideas and we made notes of those to get those, but to do a whole like to the T shot list, it was just didn't seem like the best use of time. Yeah. And with like the nature of his, of Gabe's music videos, they're very much monkey see monkey do. So it's, it's yeah. Gabe talking about a Ram truck. We know we have to get shots of the Ram truck. So it's like, Alden, just do your style on the truck, and we will ha we will have that somewhere within you know the 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 slew of footage, right? And and on the production days, there's so many variables. We don't really have any control over like what cars are, what what models or or colors or any of that kind of thing. And we only about half the time can get them to be moved. So you know, a lot of the times it's like, oh wait, where's that one weird model that you mentioned? And, he, and there have been times when he's like, oh, we don't have any of those on the lot today. And so we'll have to make up something. Or at one yeah. time he had, a, he had a little, like a little ad that had the iconic on it. And 
That's what he pointed at. Yeah. I just got a reminder that I've been on Instagram for 30 minutes today. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, but like that's how we included the iconic was because there was a picture of it, uh, like a printed ad. Yeah. But, like sometimes they're just not there. Um, so let's see. Yeah. So then we can move on to production itself. Um, so originally it started out pretty small. It was just going to be me um, going on the shoot itself, capturing all the footage and editing it all and, and then sending it to Dan to do animations. And after each video, it was like, that was great. We knocked it out of the park. We got to step it up for the next one. And so slowly Dan would get roped into doing more and more on set. I think your first thing was uh, you were the main actor in Nissan, right? Yeah, to start with, I wasn't on set at all. I, right. I wasn't included on, it was it was Walden, you go shoot, and I'll figure out the, the, the animations. Right. And then it was, well, we need a customer, but we don't want to, we don't have the budget to pay somebody else to necessarily be an extra on set. Right. So then, yeah, I was asked to just play the, the interested customer. You did a great job. Thank you so much. I had a beard back then. Yeah. Of- um and then the next one was was volkswagen that was, was really really run and gun because we had to the shoot, work right? around what the shoot. Yeah. shoot yeah we had to we shot with his wife and one of his kids and so we had about an hour and a half to make that one happen and but that one it worked out just as well as they always do um yeah. and then um Hyundai was after that did you were you on set for Hyundai? Uh the big head? Yeah. No, was not on set. But but that one we did a lot of of um coordinating ahead of time. Yeah, that sure was that was right. but, yeah, because that was a challenging uh effect. Because Gabe again that like you said earlier, Gabe came to us with the idea of the the big head effect. And right. that's certainly not something that I feel like you can just go and shoot without knowing how I'm going to go about making this animation. So we had to talk right. a little bit about how to do it. Right. Well, because especially because normally I like to keep my headroom pretty minimal. Yeah. And I had to do almost the exact opposite to make make the effect work right. Yep. Um, so then after that was Price the Vouch Cheap Ram. And that one you were pretty involved with. Yeah. Um, fair. Both of our sisters also just joined at the same time. Oh, Hello. nice. Hey. Um, uh, yeah. that, that one was like that was the first big one that we stepped things up. I felt as far as on production scale, because uh, we got a fog machine uh, that was not quite the adequate fog machine we had hoped for. It's like <laughs> yeah, it's tiny and it, it spits out fog for about thirty seconds. So Dan became the fog wrangler for the day, as well as a bit of a gaffer grip. Mm-hmm. Um, but that one was fun, and, and all the fog effects turned out really well. Yeah. So, I- I think we got it was a little stroke of luck but I think because that was the fourth one that we knew how the shoot would go we were able to kind of focus on that the new added element of how do you shoot in fog and and that was also one of the tightest dealerships I feel like we got to shoot into it was so yeah yeah but luckily that was the one where we were able to shoot after hours so we we had the extra flexibility if we had been on the tight two hour schedule, the fog would not have worked at all. And no. it would have been screwed. It rained but too. Was also, go ahead. It was raining too during that shoot. Yeah. So even more right. of a headache. Yeah. But it was a good learning experience because then we took, we, we learned or we figured out how to work that fog machine and use that on the next one, which was a uh, car sales trip. Yep. And that one, after that, after Chrysler Dodge Keep Ram, Gabe really wanted to. To step it up, he this. What's that? You were buffering on my side. Uh, sorry, that's okay. Um, but yeah, but in car sales trip, we he wanted to include animations as always, but um, a dance troupe and a ton of extras and fog and lights and it, it was a much bigger production. So that one, uh, you acted more of more as a director, and I. Spot, or I fell into cinematographer like normal, and then we also had Davis Kinville on to do some B cam. He did some stills and some general PA stuff, and then yep. your girlfriend also did some general PA stuff. 
yeah she she was she was a big help too it was yeah. the yeah everyone because like that that day we we planned that day to be i was going to be the ad so i was just going to run that and just make sure things were moving along and then it just turned into you were like can you figure out what the heck to do with like these people yeah. and it just turned into me and ended up just like <clears throat> sorry me like directing the the background and then also just helping you figure out you know what shots we have to get at one point so really it was like a nice it was nice to actually do that on the fly if it actually felt pretty yeah. good to work together yeah. like that. It, was, it was nice it was a good challenge yeah. um but it was that the the big problem there was or the big challenge there rather was that we had like 45 minutes to an hour in each dealership and we had to hit three dealerships by a certain time in the day so we were really crunched and then we were also trying to keep the same amount of extras to go from dealership a to b to c so we like had to strategically plan out when we released coffee and pizza and chips and yep it, it all worked the, out. the general managers were opening and closing stores at a certain in like intervals for us Right. So like right. it one, open one, then they had to close it. Then we moved on to like Cadillac, opened it, closed it, and then moved yeah. on to them when they opened it, closed it, and then it started raining again at the end of that day. It did, yeah, it did. And I locked yeah. my key, got locked in Cadillac. Oh yeah, I never car that day. Yeah, right, right. I Uber back over there the next day. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, and we were there were still we shot that right after Christmas, so there were Christmas decorations everywhere, and we had to like keep uh, moving the decorations based on the shot that we had. And it was, it was, I mean, that's, that's sort of the thing with these is that we don't really have great, um, we don't have great control over the location. So we have to work with what is there. Yeah. And, and sometimes the, the people are really flexible and will do like whatever we ask them to. And everybody's always nice, but some of them are more easy, more, more, uh, readily available to help us make something happen. And yeah. that's always a blessing. Um, but yeah. So then let's see. Where do we go from there? Um, is there anything else you want to talk about production wise before we go into gear, Dan? Um, well, how about how like how about working with Gabe on set, like as a talent? Yeah. Like, what can you say about that? Um, so I've worked with uh, um, a, a good amount of rappers and. The, the biggest challenge that I found is like, you need to have, you need to play the actual song itself so that it syncs up perfectly. Cause I've, I've done, I've worked with rappers who they're like, they either like can't hear it when you're playing it off of the phone or mm -hmm. they, they don't really think it's all that necessary. They're like, I got perfect time. I can, I can make it happen. And then like, they probably do have pretty good time, but they are like that much off and it makes the edit like that much harder. harder. <laughs> so um so we that, that was a thing with gabe from the from the get-go was that um we had to train him to be like all right you have to start the song like from the beginning and you gotta wait for us to say that we're recording um before you start the song but he he, he was a quick learner and you know we we were also quick learners we, we realized that we need to hit record a little early mm -hmm. to make sure that we were capturing everything um but he was always really good, always ready. You know, if we needed to do one more for whatever reason, he would do it. If we had notes, he took them. So he was he was really good to work with in that regard. Um, and he was very receptive to our ideas, even beforehand and on the fly. Yeah, he was so, he like a lot of issues that directors have working with talent, and especially with like somebody like Gabe, who he, he's he's been on camera, but he's not like an actor by trade. Um, yeah. Like a lot of the issues that I have run into is that people just can't take direction. I don't think they can get, you know, in the headspace that they need to be in while they're performing to also take the notes that you give them as a as a director, whether it's to improve the shot or to just do something that needs to be done for camera. They just have a hard time doing that Gabe, Like I, I it was like time and time again, it was like, hey, we need you to like when you hit this mark, we need you to be on this line. Like he would just yeah. he couldn't. Do it. And that was always something that was just so nice to have on set to make because that's why because like when we have no time on set like that we don't have time to mess around it's really nice to have somebody who can like hit their beats at the right point like hit, hit yeah. a certain line at a certain point so i always like working with gabe in, in that respect yeah. i think he was he was definitely aware that you know the product that we were trying to get was essentially the end goal was a great piece of marketing for him mm -hmm. so he was always ready to 
you know, yeah, you need that again, whatever. So, yeah. And but, you, you could tell like, you, after, especially in Car Sales Drip, since that was like twice as long as all the other ones, he would get to the end of the song. And, <laughs> ooh, and yeah, we were all getting a, a serious workout that day. And he's always, and he's always in a suit. So he's always like moving yeah. around in like a suit. Right. So he's got to be hot, you know? Right. I'm in my normal shirts and shorts and, and I'm sweating my ass off. And, you know, there he is in full suit. And, and he always, he always showed up and, and was a good, good sport about it. But, yep. Yeah. Cool. So let's move on to gear. Um, it was all you. Yeah. Gear is pretty, pretty straightforward. At least that's how it seems to me. Mm -hmm. I have, um, you know, I've, I've dialed my kit in over the last two or three years. So is there another commercial plan for the future? Um, the, the, the original plan was to keep doing videos. Um, you know, I, we said earlier, there are 20 or so Cochrane brands that are sold in Southwestern PA. And so the original idea was to do one music video per brand. Um, things are kind of on hold right now, as is the world. Um, but I know Gabe is probably itching to make some more music, and we're we're always ready to make more videos. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Right. So Renzo says, what was the cam? So uh, I use the Sony A7S III. I'm sorry, the Sony A7 III. I wish I could use the A7S three, but that doesn't exist. Um, I use A7 III. We shoot everything pretty much 4K, 24 frames per second for the performances. And then the little amount of B-roll that we do get, which is like the shots of the cars or close-ups of um, his outfit, him walking around, that kind of thing. We'll do that at 1080, 120. Um, excuse me. So... That's how we shoot that. I shoot everything um, S log. S log two is what I prefer on the A7 III. Um, we have, for the most part, shot the entirety of the videos using a Zune Crane gimbal. Um, I believe it's a Zune Crane Plus. It's the one I got about two years ago, and it just has the right payload for the setup that I have. Um, I usually rock an ND filter all the time, a variable ND, so that inside i can just take it off and outside i can rack it all the way on and have great exposure pretty much whatever the setting is mm -hmm. i have attached to my gimbal so the gimbal it's got a big stem and then i attach a little monitor here so it's a five five inch um atomos monitor and that way i can see real big with focus peaking and everything what i am filming and that is that's really been the saving grace for gimbal operating is that you know the the little screen um the little screen is like right in the middle of the whole gimbal interface so you can't see so having the monitor there makes it really easy <clears throat> somebody said i'm taking notes on all the questions if you want to wait or yeah yeah we'll, we'll we'll do we'll do questions at the end that's great i'm taking notes on them guys all right, uh, let's see. So we, Gabe has, I think it's a Beats Pill or some sort of speaker, you know, like like a Beats Pill, um, but he uses that. He hooks his phone up and plays songs through there. And that has been a real game changer. It used to just do, like play it off your phone and hope that you can hear it. Um, but with that Bluetooth speaker, that makes it really easy to hear hear everything in, ca in the camera audio, and then sync it up in post. Um, the only other things, oh, I was going to say, we have shot a handful of things in the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and car sales handheld. I really love doing handheld. My camera doesn't like focusing, though. Um, I like doing handheld when it works. Wow. So is, Dan, does it look like I'm very out of focus? Uh, you've been going in and out. It's okay. Yeah. I'm exposed right here, so. Yeah. Um, but, um, I like doing handheld a lot when, when you can do it in a controlled setting, because then I feel like you can, you can get really stylistic with what your handheld is. You know, if you're running and gunning and like actually running around handheld is not that good and the gimbal is great. So that's why we use the gimbal the majority of the time. And you can also get like cool, um, <clears throat> you can, you can move the X axis with the gimbal. Um, and so that makes, that makes it really cool to like follow him around. Mm -hmm. um, when he's doing the performances, it also helps with your gear. Like the A7, uh, 
two, two, a seven S two, um, a seven three. Your it, it also helps that that camera has pretty good internal stabilization. So even going yeah. hand, you have the ability to do that. Whereas other cameras, right. um, some cameras don't have IS, so it's it's almost impossible to run. Right. You know? Right. Yeah, and then I would say, as far as lenses, I would say ninety to maybe ninety five percent has been shot on my faithful Zeiss twenty four to seventy f four. It was the first lens I got for the Sony, and that thing has been through great. everything under the sun. So um, that that has really just been my my most trusty workhorse. Uh, when I do handheld stuff, I do I have a set of vintage Nikon glass that is really pretty and opens up a lot more. So I like to use that when I'm going handheld, but manual focus on a gimbal is just like a nightmare. pretty much not possible unless you're Dan and you have all the attachments. Little twisty guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the last few videos, we used a handful of lights. They're really simple. Um, newer, or newer, however you say, N E E W E R. They make some really good lens or really good lights for the price point. Mm -hmm. I got mine on Amazon, I think, maybe B&H, but they're, they're really good. Um, they have a great throw, and they, they've been able to do what I've wanted them to do, so that's all I can really ask for in the light. I mean, they, I know the drawbacks that they have, but I just move around that, you know? Um, and then the fog machine we have, you might be able to see it, or I'll pull it out real quick. It's a uh, Chauvet, I think is how you say it, because it's French, maybe. Um, DJ, it's, it's super tiny, as you can see, um, like it's just minuscule, but it's, it's done great for us as far as, um, making the fog that we needed to make. And your lights actually worked really well with that too. Um, yeah, absolutely. We, I feel like we weren't sure whether they were going to cut it enough or give us enough like volume. Um, yeah. but I felt like they did. And then also being able to turn on the, uh, the car headlights. Yeah. That, yeah. that did a lot to it. So we used a lot of our environment. In right. And car. that's, that's one of the examples where the people that were there that, that were operating the managers operating the uh, dealership, they were really helpful and just did, you know, whatever we wanted. They moved cars around, turned lights on and off and it was great. Yeah. Um, so that pretty much covers the production gear. We don't really capture any audio. No, no need for microphones or anything like that because it's all going to get cut and just replaced by the song later. Uh, all right. So oh, I guess we, I usually shoot on Lexar SD cards, although I've been switching to SanDisk mini SD because you can use them in both a GoPro and a A7 with an adapter. But I, I, I can really get into the nitty gritty if somebody wants, just message me and I'll happily, um, happily tell you more about my kit. So then we get into post-production. Um, as far as the editing process goes, I do all editing in Adobe Premiere. You can see it a little bit back here, looping. But so the first thing I do, obviously after dumping and doing my standard media um, management, I will sort everything, all the stuff that we shot into the performance clips and into the B-roll. And then the big headache, it's not a headache that much. It's just the thing that takes the most time in a music video is getting all of the tracks synced up. Um, you know, normally, I would say with a normal music video, I might have 10 to 20 layers of performance tracks. But with Gabe, because he's, he's a trooper and he'll do it however many times we want him to do it, and we try to do it in a vast amount of locations around the dealerships, I usually have 30 to 50 tracks of performances to, to go awesome. through. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Um, not to derail you. So when you're when you're editing these, how much how much do you um, look at the quality of the performance and like the, the quality of your overall like composition compared to like the quality of the shots? Like say it got over a little overexposed or out of focus or like how do you how do you choose that? Like what what are your yeah. choices for that? Right. So um I don't. I I can I can give a little way but leeway to focus. I, I don't. I try to not get too nitpicky on that, but I hate overexposed stuff. So I, I'm usually pretty much on the ball 
as far as like shooting on the day of and keeping that, yeah, keeping keeping things exposed properly. But if for whatever reason something does get blown out, then mm-hmm. I would probably nix that shot. If if something's a little bit out of focus, but the camera angle is really good or his performance is really good, I will. Um, I'll try to try to keep it in there still. So. Okay. But, yeah. Just keep- yeah. Um, so then after I've synced all the performance clips, I will literally go through um, like bar by bar of the song and set in and out points and loop that bar and go through each track, each performance and, and enable one or one at a time so that I'm only watching one. And if I like that little section, I'll keep it. And if I don't like it, I'll delete it. And I'll do that through the whole song and try to have one track for each bar set um, so that I have like a full performance track. And then I'll go back through and eliminate any of the clips or bars that don't, that don't really stand up to the rest of the video. So if like, he's like at a hundred, a hundred percent on, or if he, if he's performing really well for 90%, I'll take out the rest of the 10%. And that's usually where I fill in B-roll and that kind of thing. Um, The other B-roll is like car-specific stuff. So when he says certain things, if it's like a feature that a car has or if it's a specific model itself, that's where I will find the B-roll that corresponds to it and try to make it sort of sea dog say dog So like when he says like, uh, of course, I can't remember any of the lines in any of the songs right now. But when he talks about the heated steering wheel, there's a shot of the heated steering wheel. Um, um, Hannah, I had a question that pertains okay. to the, the, what's the biggest challenge in this process? I'm assuming that's what I'm saying. Um, the biggest challenge in the editing process is is getting through that first pass of the performance edit. Um, because you, I, I literally have to go through each like four second section of the song and watch 30 angles and get that down to 10 angles and then get that down to five and down to hopefully just one. Sometimes there are two and that's when I'll cut more than just once in a bar. But um, yeah, that's, that's definitely like the most time intense uh, section. And then the most, I would say that my least favorite part is when, you know, normally we try to do the whole song from beginning to end in each section and that makes it really easy to sync because there's a specific beat at the beginning where i can sync any clip that has the beginning Mm -hmm. but then sometimes we'll go to um a specific line that's only about one car and so gabe will wrap that line in front of that one car and then i've got to really go in frame by frame and find exactly how does this sync up Mm -hmm. because because i don't have that beat from the beginning to, to do the master sync and so that that's my least favorite part, but it doesn't always take that. Um, so then we go through our revisions process with Gabe. Um, we send him a rough cut. Don't have any color correction or anything on the rough cut. Don't have any animations on the rough cut. We send him that, make sure that he's a okay with how the edit is looking. And that's when we'll dive into color correction and animation. Um, lately for color correction, I've been using um tropic color looks i've been tweaking those a lot they've been getting really the colors that i want just perfectly dialed in um, are you coming right in premiere or are you going into da vinci i am currently still in premiere but i took a webinar the other day about da vinci and i'm like oh, i definitely need to switch to da vinci yeah it, like the the lumetri window in premiere has really advanced over the last few years and and you have a lot of powerful tools especially the hsl curves yeah but um the things that the people were showing in the da vinci webinar i was like you can't even get close to that in premiere. Yeah. you're like wasting footage it feels like right right so i'm definitely definitely looking to switch to da vinci in probably the coming weeks of COVID 19. you got enough better to do besides learn how to color <laughs> right um and so I'll, I'll just finish up real quick before dan dives into the full animation process um, so we do color and animation. I combine those two back together, send that off to Gabe, and he usually approves. Um, and then we add 
in all of the things for YouTube, like the stuff at the end that says like subscribe. He's got his phone number if you want to call him and buy a car, that kind of all that information. We like, put that in at the end. And then we usually, Dan and I collaborate on the credits as well. Mm-hmm. So that's the last step. And then it's done. So, Dan, if you want to dive into animation, have at it. Yeah, definitely. I will definitely talk about some animation. So uh, I also am in the Adobe family. So a lot of the animations are done within After Effects. Uh, the, all of the animations are done within After Effects. Um, there's a couple plugins that I use uh, pretty heavily for Gabe stuff. Um, the one that I use the most is a free plugin from Video Copilot called Saber which is actually one of the questions that I got was, how do I do the neon thingy? Um, The neon thingy is Saber, and Saber is a plugin that essentially lets you control the, uh, it's it's like, it's edges and masks. So you can control the edge of text or uh, shape layers or mask layers in After Effects. And what that does, it allows you to put a neon effect onto it. Uh, it allows you to put like an electric, like some, some weird electric thing or fog or there, there are so many possibilities, which is why it is really one of the only plugins that I've used is because there it's so versatile to create the flashy animations that Gabe likes and has shown us the style that he likes. So um, I'm sure people do it other ways. Um, but Saber is definitely the, the approach that I've taken so far. And then I've also used Element 3D, which is another um, video copilot uh, plugin, which is a, which is a 3D uh, emulation software within After Effects, which is how I did the, uh, the dancing spider behind the dealership in Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, uh, the gold blocks on the table in V-Dub. And I think then I also put a gold lion in yeah. V-Dub. Yeah, and the gold lion that was in V-Dub. Um, so, uh, that, that's how I did those animations. Um, uh, so those are the plugins that I use. Um, other than that, it's, everything is traditional within after effects. Uh, I use, I, I do 3d tracking and motion tracking and camera tracking all in after effects, which is how I, which is how I go about tracking stuff into the scene with him, which has become a huge staple for Gabe's look, honestly, is these animations that look like they're within the world of, of Gabe. Um, a lot of text, I, I wrote all of it down, a lot of text, um, based stuff. So I don't want to do like kinetic topography, but I want to include, like, I think it was early on that we did, like, we tracked like lyrics onto the floor or like his name onto the floor yeah. or the wall, or whenever, um, he was right. like, just to add something to the video. Um, and I already talked about the animations, but the the process. So that's kind of the style and and and, and the how. The process, though, is first of all, me and you talk um, first and foremost about how do we get like the look that we want out of the animations. Um, and I feel like we've done a pretty good job of communicating the style that we want. We've we've pretty much been on the same page there. And then we've also done a very good job about shooting it um and making it a lot easier for me in the in, in the post side of things to, to actually get it done um but yeah you hand off the the footage to me you hand off a locked edit um which is the most important thing that you can have a locked edit um so that we don't have that at least that's the one thing we don't have to worry about is anything changing um and then i go through and uh sometimes we have ideas for shots already like put in there like like uh i'm trying to think of a good one that we like definitely knew that we were gonna do um did any come to mind for you um like the, the big head ones for sure oh yeah sure the big head so the big head alden uh for nissan or hyundai alden shot uh gabe singing and i told him to shoot it 4k export it to me at 4k but i'm gonna return it to you at 1080 because I need his 4K head to be large enough on his body. So whenever we talk about that type of stuff, it's easier because we know like you're like, I want this shot with a big head, this shot with a big head, this shot with a big head. But then I, it feels like almost every other video has been like, all right, here's the edit. Now, like, just figure out how to make some animations on it. And it's not really that much. You don't really throw it at me like that. Like, that makes it sound like you're just like, hey, good luck. It's more like we've talked about how to shoot, like how, how to, what are the best ways for you to shoot a shot for me to apply visual effects to it? And uh, I feel like we've actually done that pretty well up until that yeah. point. 
or up until I, I would say more than half the time when I pass off an edit to you, I have an, I have some ideas in mind that I, I usually share a handful of them, but I want to give you some freedom. But usually I'll like there'll be a handful of shots. I'm like, Dan's probably going to do something to that shot. And nine times out of ten, you do. And it's oh, perfect. Okay. And it's like, yeah, that's great. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, I feel like that's the that's the process. Like, there's not really too much else to it. Um, it's it's a lot of it, it's 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 honestly a lot of just being creative with like looking at the shot. Like, there's a, there was a shot that was just playing behind you where like the dancers were like dancing and freezing, and like I don't know why it came to me, but I was like, as soon as they like, I want to do like a DDR thing, like where like yeah. like you get to that point and like you hit it, you hit it, you hit it, like you like, and I don't know why it's just handy. So it's a lot of like just off the cuff being weird, like being creative with it as you're going through it. Um, yeah. With that. I, 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 I appreciate having that freedom. Yeah. Was, um, was car sales drip more challenging for you in any, I mean, I know it was like a longer video, so probably in that sense, but um, we also like had discussed with Gabe, the importance of having the dancers have their, have their dance be accentuated by the animation. Yeah, absolutely. That um, the length, wasn't really that much of an option because we we did talk about a larger budget and we talked we already knew that going into it that it was going to be a longer video so the 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 length of the video wasn't really a big deal but yeah the amount of dancers and the amount of animation that had to go on top of the dancers or with the dancers that took a lot of time um i'm trying to see if there's an example behind you that i want to talk about uh not really. It's just like there's like the the opening shot for sure of them like walking. Yeah. Like I was like, well, they're all coming, so I have to put something on all of them. I have to keep right. them involved, and I have to like teach the audience how to watch the music video. So you kind of have to show that all in the very beginning of the of the shoot. So yeah. the dance made it easier because they had defined like moves that I could right. animate to. Um, but there was just a lot of them, so that was a lot. Yeah. 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 Uh, I was just watching that. There's a shot where Gabe's wife Ashley like shows her ring off, and there's a bling sound effect in the song. And that was I had like texted you. I was like, "Oh, we have to do something to make her ring bling." And you're like, "I'm way ahead of you." I already did it. <laughs> yeah. And that was actually just a flare. I did like an optical flare. There wasn't really any animation there. So okay. it was just an overlaid element. Um, yeah. Yeah. What about um, in Nissan when you pop from car to car? And you have the stars go around your head. Is, it, is that a complex animation? Uh, no. 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 That's like super, super simple. Cool. Super subtle. Super subtle. Super quick. Uh, it's uh, that one was uh, downloaded element because um, we were a little bit rushed. I feel like on one of those edits, um, but no, that was just like a simple track it to track it to like my glasses or something like that. So that whenever I move, it moves with me. Um, okay. And that's like, that. that's like, that is the bread and butter of what I've been doing is just like tracking an animation into the scene. Yeah. And just as long as it looks cool, people believe that it's like built into the world. So, which yeah. is like weird that that's been like a lot of the, a lot of my effects have just been tracking and tracking and tracking and tracking. Yeah. One of my favorite is um, from Nissan. There's a shot a wide shot outside and you can you see a bunch of the clouds and there had been a blank spot in the raw footage and you put his um his logo in the clouds and made it made it look like the texture and color of the clouds nobody and, knows that effect yeah I, I think there was like we were like shooting either the last or second last video with gabe and we were talking about that and he was like what i don't know what you're talking about and we had to point it out and his mind is blown because he had never seen his logo up in the clouds mm -hmm. Yeah, that was one of my favorite ones because it was uh, there's like a a, a tracking uh, option where you can say that the scale of the um, the the zoom changes. Yeah, but like you're doing a digital zoom, I think. So I yeah. just I just told I told the tracking software like, we're we're changing the focal length, and it just like knew that, so it was able to like scale it appropriately when it was in the yeah. sky. Which I you didn't even know it was there until you saw the alpha the alpha to export too, right? Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you, is there a favorite animation that you have? Yeah. Uh, yes. The, um, from car sales drip, there's two in there that I love, but from car sales drip, it's the, um, shot when there, it's a crowd of people dancing 
and they're all around Gabe. It's at the very end of the the thing, and he's like moving, and he like does this move where he like grabs something and like throws it up and waits for it, yeah. and then it comes back down and he like catches it and dances. And yeah. um, I remember like I saw him do that, and I immediately knew like on set. I looked at him like we have to shoot that again, and you have to shoot it wide because I yeah. wanted him grabbing some like energy of like just ball of energy, throwing it yeah. up, and then it coming back down and like making a big thing. That was my favorite one, and that was yeah, that was a challenging one to do because I I couldn't I, I had to figure out how to make something like live within the space of the camera it was hard yeah. <laughs> it was hard yeah that was a good one did you say there was one more in car sales drip yeah the watch whenever he talks about the yeah. drip on his watch yeah. uh tracking like the face of his watch and then uh, just creating the the actual like liquid because like i'm not going to create a fluid animation that's not something that i can do but figuring out how to do an after effects was a really fun challenge of like yeah. making something look like it was liquid and dripping off of his arm so yeah nice. that was yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. I would say my favorite part of the edits is um Gabe was Gabe was always very consistent with his performances. And so there would there would be uh, at least once in every video, I feel like there would be a time when he would do a certain move that would be right on the beat. And so then I would be able to match cut from one angle to another and he would be continuing that move, but the, the background would change. The same performances. Right. Right. Okay. And that's he, he did that frequently, and that's just one of my favorite, one of my favorite cuts to make in these type of music videos. Mm -hmm. Cool. So that's pretty much um, post production. So yeah, after we combine color and animation, we export it, upload it to YouTube for him, and send him the file to download so he can put it on Instagram and Facebook. And that's when things get weird in his distribution, because normally. We, Dan and I would expect that we, you'd get okay numbers on Instagram and pretty good numbers on YouTube and not great numbers on Facebook. And it's completely the inverse. It, his YouTube page has a fair amount of subscribers for who he is, but no, like no views on the videos. And Instagram, I think, has normal views. But then Facebook, it just like takes off and gets right. a completely new life. Um, I, I don't really know how. I know there are a lot of hip hop groups on Facebook that will share or repost his stuff. And then there's also like a lot of marketing um, groups or car sales groups that will share what he's doing. Um, Cause I, I know he, he took a little bit of inspiration from a guy named Bowtie Terrence, who is another car salesman that made one video and, and it got some, some good, uh, some good traction on the internet. And so that's just, that's, definitely a, a very real way that it blows up on Instagram or I'm sorry, on Facebook. I think car sales drip has something like 250,000 views where I looked it up just cause I figured we were going to talk about it. It's at uh, 278,000. Like, that is, it's crazy. Like it's right. great. I, I like any of the videos I've made for myself or something like I'd be happy if I got 2000 views. Yeah. Two thousand. Right. Like, right. So, I don't, I really have no idea how it can get that much traction on Facebook. Um, but it really just grows its own legs and, and moves. Mm -hmm. um, and then one of the things that Gabe has been, has really wanted to do, and I'm sure is still trying to do, is he wants to be on Ellen. So every video you might have seen, he tries to tag Ellen, Ellen. And, yeah. and get her to, to watch his videos so that he can come on and, and talk about his raps, talk about his music um cool so that's pretty much production from start to finish um the only thing we have left to dive into is uh my friend renzo had asked about how the business relationship operates um so we will dive into that now and first things first is contracts you always need them uh if they're not your friend you definitely always need them and if they are your friend you should pretty much still have them because you know it's it's not because like friends are gonna screw you over or whatever but it's just it sets expectations and makes so like you everybody knows what's gonna happen and nobody is miscommunicating or questioning or any sort of bad things happening yeah and it's something to fall back to it's like it's a good right it's a good thing to be like like if revisions get out of hand it is nice to be like listen the contract said we could do three you know right exactly or i, I have to 
clients before that want their video now, even though it says that their video doesn't come for another week. And, you know, you have to explain, like, I'll, I'll be happy to try to get it to you ahead of time, but I can't promise anything other than what's in the contract. Yeah, or like so. there's rush to be involved with that. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And then so another couple good things with contracts is it keeps you from being too liable for too much. Um, so you can, you know, you can pretty much cover your own butt with whatever clauses you have in your contract, especially with things like um, what's happening now with coronavirus is like, it's a good to have a force majeure contract. I think that's how you say it. A force majeure clause that, um, you know, if basically something's out of your hand, if you're forced to not go to work because you're not essential, a contract can save you from having to, to from, from defaulting and, and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Breaking your contract, basically. So contracts are good because, you know, like that's the thing where if you had a friend and they wanted a video, but now you can't go shoot because of coronavirus, it's not because you're being a bad friend. It's, you know, the contract covers you and you don't get in legal trouble with the government. Yeah. And I feel like the, that and um, all the information you said about, like, even if it's a friend, like anybody who's interested in shooting weddings, I feel like you could yeah. attend this. Contracts are everything because you never know if a wedding is going to go through or not. And it's a, that's an awkward conversation to have, especially, yeah. especially for a wedding videographer. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. That's, that's Hannah and my wife and I, we shoot weddings um, as well. And that's like the real thing is, uh, on some of the Facebook groups for wedding photographers, people are like, what do I do? My contract says I don't have to do anything here, but I feel like I, as a good person, I should. And like, that's, that's the good thing about a contract is, you know, it, it keeps you safe and then you can make, you know, the judgment call after that. Yeah. Um, but then you can also in the contract include clauses that say that you can share, um, the video afterwards, you know, sometimes with bigger clients or projects, you're not able to share based on whatever their overall legality and contract thing is around their project. But what Dan and I try to do is at least with the gig videos, we include a clause that says we can obviously share it on our personal accounts, wherever that might be, but we can also use sections or the entirety of the video to describe um, how we did things. So basically like having a play here in the background, I'm legally allowed to do that because of the contract. And Dan has a YouTube video where he dives into animations. He can do that because of the contract. Yep. If you want to go watch more about the animations, I have a long video all about it. So, right. Head over to my YouTube. <laughs> Check it out. Yeah. Um, but I've been doing the, I've been posting um, every Monday. I've posted uh, from beginning to end the, the music videos themselves on my business Instagram. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah doing that just because it's good content and it's a good way to show like of my abilities as a motion graphic designer um it's just good for exposure yeah absolutely um let's see what else we have um deadlines are very important to include in your contract like i said earlier it helps manage the expectations of the client um but it also keeps you liable i am a procrastinator at heart and having deadlines in my contract you know i I, it makes me really stay on top of things and make sure that I hit the deadlines and get the videos done when they need to be done. Um, and that, that I think if you're a procrastinator, that's just like an easy way to get out of it is have steps in there. You know, with Gabe, we have actual deliverables of when we have to turn in a rough cut, not just the finished video. So I have to hit that rough cut deadline or else I get in trouble. And that keeps me, make sure I hit, hit the deadline and then, um, it's also important to include deadlines for when the client needs to give you feedback, because if they don't give you feedback in a reasonable amount of time, then you can't finish the video in the time in the timeline that you laid out to begin with. Yeah. So, or the fine cut deadlines or. Yeah. Right. Right. So it's basically, you know, if I give Gabe a video on Monday, then I'm looking for him to give me uh, feedback by Tuesday night or Wednesday night. And that way that leaves me enough time to, if he does have changes, I can make them and implement them in time to get it done and get the video still released by Friday. So we have a question that kind of pertains to that if you want to answer or help answer it. Um, yeah. Christina, Christina asked, what's the turnaround time for one video? Um, sure. I think yeah. that's a good question. Um, so in general, it was usually from the time that we got the song to when the video would be released. It was usually like a month, actually. Um, 
we, because of the way that the game schedule is with only having Fridays to do location scouts and shoots, um, it usually worked out to where we would get the song, go location scout on a Friday, that first Friday, shoot the following Friday. And then I would have about a week to do the rough cut. And um, Dan would then have usually three to four days to do animation. Is that right? Cool. And, I, and while Dan, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> while Dan was doing the animation, I would then do the color. Um, so, yeah, I would say generally it was about four weeks, sometimes less, sometimes more. From the from beginning of project to put on social media. Correct. But it's okay. production to like production to end about two weeks. Yeah. Say. Yeah, from the day that we shoot to the day that it's turned around, I would say two weeks generally. Yeah. Um, let's see. Releases, as far as production or uh, business relationship, releases are important. You know, obviously we need Gabe to have a release because it's his pretty face that's going to be all over everywhere, and we should just cover all the all the legal things to make sure that he has a release form for his own video. It might seem a little a little redundant or silly, but it's best to just have it. Um, but then especially with the car sales trip video, we had to have releases for everybody that was on set for liability because Cochran wanted to make sure that, you know, should anything happen where somebody would get hurt, nobody would be able to hold Cochran liable. Nobody would be able to hold myself liable or Dan liable. So like that, uh, a waiver release is good in that regard. And then also a release of, um, likeliness so they can be on the video yeah so you just have to get those things always they're really important and it lets it so that if if um somebody may ever need or may ever feel like that they're misrepresented or don't want their face out there or anything you have a form that says that you could put their face out there so I get um, what's that you're frozen dan Oh no! Well, Dan, are you there? All right, I will keep moving until Dan gets back. Maybe he's back. There he is. Yeah. Okay. You were frozen for a minute. Yep. <laughs> were you? It sounded like you were about to ask a question. No, no, I was taking a drink of what's left of my water, which is just ice. Okay. No questions here. All right. Um. So let's see. Um. As far as scope of the project, that's a great, uh, an important thing to include in the contract. That's mm -hmm. everything from how many shoot days, how long the shoot days will be, and when they'll be, to um, how long the video is, when it's going to be turned around, deadlines, all of that kind of thing. Also, how many revisions you're going to do. Um, for bigger commercial projects, three is like a standard. But with music videos, Gabe, we were always pretty much on the same page with Gabe. So one review was pretty much all that he needed. Three were included, but we never had deadlines for multiple ones because we never had to go that far. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's important to have a scope of project. And that it, basically what that is, is it says you're going to do this much work and the client is going to pay you this much for that work. Um, and that's important because, you know, sometimes there'll be a thing like scope creep. So it'll start out as a small video and then things will get added on and added on and added on. And with the scope, clause in your contract you can clearly point to it and say hey this thing that you're asking for is out of scope so um you sort of have to when things go out of scope you have to make a judgment call about whether how you want to approach that if you want to try to charge more for whatever the thing is or if you want to just let it go because it's not that big of a deal and so that was what dan alluded to earlier was most of the things that we as we made the videos better and better each time we never really, um, they weren't big things like having the fog machine, that kind of thing. It wasn't a big add on to what the original scope of the project was. But then when we went to car sales drip, being that it was a song that was twice as long, with way more moving parts and the extras and just a lot more stuff. That was when we approached Gabe and we were like, Hey, you know, this is all great. Um, I think we need to look at what the scope of the project is. Dan, we got 26 seconds remaining. What the heck? What? All right. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, like questions. Oh, the I last question. We could probably end this and start another one. But yeah, we could just do that. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in. We'll try to come back and answer questions. Yeah, we're going to jump Bye. back. Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, Dan and I were just finishing up our little um, session on diving into the process of doing music videos for Gabe McNeil. Um, we got kicked off, I guess, Instagram Live has a time limit, so we didn't realize that. And now we are going to try to patch some uh, Q&As to end, end this thing up. I'm waiting for Dan. But, yeah, that was, we, we got through all the notes that we had to cover. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, Dan wrote down all the questions from the last slide. And if you have more new questions, go ahead and type them in to the, uh, the comment bar there. We will try to answer them if Dan can join. If not, I'm just going to vamp for a minute, and because uh, I don't know what the questions are. There's Dan. Hello. Hey. I made it back. Great. All yeah. right, so let's dive into these questions. Yeah. Okay. So um, Hannah asked, what's it like directing musicians versus actors? I believe that was for you, right? Um, I mean, you can go to both of us, because you've, you've done a fair amount of uh, directing musicians. Uh, and a yeah. little bit of actors, I guess. You've done a lot of commercial stuff recently, so um, I don't. I don't know. I think with directing musicians, it's you're kind of directing people to because they're they're doing their own like art form, so yeah. they kind of already know what they're doing as far as like performing. But they're also more often than not, when it's a musician, it's for a product that benefits them, so they're way more receptive to the critique and they're way more i feel like they're they're way more invested in the end product than with an actor depending on the situation the actor is more so just like yeah i'll do whatever you need me to do just tell me what you want me to do so it's a little less how can they help you i, I don't know it's it, it is a weird it's a weird balance it really is i think the yeah. musicians are more performing for their purpose than the actor so. yeah i think you have to rely a lot more on the mus musician's energy because they are, you know, they're not always trained actors. You know, they might be good at acting, but they they only usually have like film experience, so they don't quite know how things work with doing multiple takes of the same thing or whatnot. But if they have a good amount of energy, then you can point them in the right direction and just let them go and, and hope that you capture it on the camera. And, you know, if you, if you need to do it again or if you need them to play it down or play it up more, they, they can usually be pretty receptive to that. But it's definitely a lot. Um, it's very important what they're, what they bring to the table as musicians. Completely agree. Yeah. Um, I acknowledge you, from Austin. Here we go. Uh, well, we can answer. Uh, we'll do Austin's question next since he's here. Um, he asked, "Is it harder or easier to work with a close friend?" So, like, how? What? What's our work relationship been like doing these videos? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's been great with you. I, I think working with friends is good as long as you have, um, if you're, if you're communicating well and you're on the same, you're, you're going towards the same vision. Um, I think sometimes, you know, friends might assume that they communicate well or know what the other person wants. And I could see how that would be a bad thing. But as far as you and I, we are pretty clear of communicating of what the final product is going to be and bringing both of our strengths to make that happen. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good question, Austin, because um, I feel like there's people that just think like, hey, we can go into into business together, we can create something together, or we can uh, you know work on a project together really well just because we're close friends. And I think the difference with our mine and your relationship as far as creators go is uh, we started working together pretty much from day one. Like we worked on each other's like student film sets, like as freshmen. Right. And we just continued, like our, our friendship was built off of the fact that we worked well together making movies and videos. So right. I think, I think that is, is a key uh, element to why me and you work well together. Um, so 
I feel like I've worked with people in the past that I've been good friends with that we didn't work well together. So I think it's, you have to find somebody that you can communicate really well with. Um, yeah. Because that's ultimately, I think the, the best part is the right. most important part. Yeah. And you and I have benefited of that long history of working together that we figured out how to communicate. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We don't, that's not even like a, a, a thing that crosses our mind too, too often. Now it's just like, let's start talking about the project. We don't have to figure out how to work together. Yeah. Huh. Austin comment in that. Was that shade at you? Uh, no, I, as a lot of relationships work, uh, you have to work at them to make them work. And we, we have put time and energy into figuring out how to work together. So, so no, that wasn't shade to you. It's just that me and you took a different direction on working together as close friends. Hopefully he's okay with that answer. Yeah. We'll see. Cool. Uh, what's next? I have a couple questions. I'm not sure if they're from my girlfriend's mom or my girlfriend's dad, because I think they're sharing an account. Okay. Um, do we pref did we prefer one video to another? Um, yeah, I mean, I think definitely as far as I, as far as my opinion is concerned, car sales drip is just the best, um, example of what we are able to do. You know, all the other videos are great. Um, but they were the, the scope of what car sales trip was, we were really able to show off the different expertises that we have and also like bringing in more people just makes it that much better of a video. We also were put into our respective elements too there like yeah. that was, for that was the first video where i i direct i directed uh the the actors and you directed the photography so it was that was the first time we were both put back into like our roles that we right. that knew worked really well together in um yeah. but besides that one what's your favorite one uh chrysler dodge deep ram i just the the way that the fog worked it was like you know the luckiest mistake and and um but the, the product of it, the product from it is really good. And that one we shot a little bit handheld on. And I think the handheld that's included, it works really well. And, and is, uh, yeah, I think it just adds to the, the film itself or the music video. Okay. How about you? Uh, the Nissan Anthem. That was yeah. the, the first one that we did cool titles with where I, I animated titles. Um, but then... I, I also just really love the, the heated steering wheel was like, I love that animation. Cause it was like, yeah. it, it was so purposeful. And overall, I like the animation for that one the most. Cause it was like an anime cartoon, like 2d cartoon style. So I, I had a lot yeah. of just fun making uh, the animations for that one. Yeah. Plus you're in that one. And I'm in it. Yeah. There was, yeah, there's two good looking dudes in the, in the front and center of that one. So yeah. NBD. Cool. Uh, how do we find extras? Um, with, I mean, Carl Strip was the only one that we had extras and it was pretty much Gabe that found them all. He has a really big reach on social media, on Instagram and Facebook, and he's got a lot of good friends that, um, are willing to give up a Sunday and come, come help him out. You know, he, he was able to wrangle in, um, friends that are police officers, uh, just everybody under the sun. But the police officer were specifically interesting because we didn't know, or we did know that was happening. But yeah, um, we knew one of them too. He was from, uh, right. you know, from Point Park, right? So that that was interesting. But yeah, he, he was the one that was able to, you know, he talked to Blair and had BJ Blair there to to spin records and with all the lights and everything. And that was like a happy accident. We didn't plan right. to have those lights. Yeah, so. big, big PV there, right? Um. But if we were to look for if we were to look for actors, I think that would come or extras. Definitely, I would reach out on social media, various Facebook groups. Yeah, that would be the direction that I would go with looking for um, Facebook yeah. groups. Yeah, there's a handful of Facebook groups about around Pittsburgh actors and extras where people are pretty pretty responsive. I've got a handful of actors and extras from it. What's he say? When it's when it's an independent person, how do you make a budget? It has to be harder to tell someone who is funding the project out of his own pocket. Out of a, if you have money coming out of a company, it's a lot easier to spend that money than when you're funding your own personal project. So right. 
it's just instilling value in the money that they're putting into the project, telling them, like, okay. ensuring them that it's worth what they're paying for. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And explain the value of the product itself, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, Gabe had a vision, and, and we were able to clearly say, like, you know, your money is going to create this level of production, and and you could probably find somebody to do it cheaper, but they might not be able to produce the same quality of the video that we will. And so it's it's instilling that that confidence of your own work and of the product that you're going to be able to make for some, somebody. Yeah, but yeah, that was a good question, Austin. Um, how much input does the client have in the final product? That really changes from every um, project. You know, some some clients are you know very hands off and want you to sort of take control. Um, as, as an artist or whatever, as a filmmaker. Um, with Gabe, he, he gave us a lot of, of free reign. Um, I can, can only think of like a handful of notes that he ever had for us to change it. Like he, he, he believed in us and our talent and, and the work that we were doing. So as long as the final product was something that he was happy with, he, he really didn't ask for us to change that much. Yep. Um, What's the best social media for views? Oh, that is such a hard question. If you knew the answer, yeah. if you have the answer, you're a genius. Right. I, I, I mean, I think it changes from project to project and person to person. You know, it, the content that you're making for off brand probably performs the best on YouTube because that's where long form stuff works well. Yeah. Short form works better on Instagram, from my experience, but there's not no uh no formula to making a good video or making a good video that'll get a bunch of views yeah because there's been creators that only put stuff on vimeo and they do right. really well and it's like well there's it's just a whole other crowd it's it kind of depends on the crowd that you want and the crowd that you're able to create right so and like we said earlier gabe is somehow able to get hundreds of thousands of views on his videos excuse me on facebook and like i don't know how but yeah. it somehow has that he has that ability time and time again that with these videos they perform really well on Facebook and not so well on the other platforms. Yeah. He's definitely figured it out, which is half the battle, I feel like. Yeah. Um, and then Austin had a question. Uh if we had plans to make another video with Gabe after this, uh once the apocalypse is over. I don't, don't think have anything con- nothing concrete right now. But like I said earlier, he's supposed to be making more music and um the original goal was to make 20 some videos so we've only made six so far so, so yeah tentatively we have plans right yeah um that's all the questions we had while we were uh talking cool um, so if anybody else who's watching has any uh questions let us know Asking now we got, a, we got all of Austin's friends joining. We got, nice. got Jeff. Final question. How was your wedding, Alden? I'm, I'm today. I had a good time. Uh, uh, Austin. Yeah. My, my wedding was great. Um, it was it was a great time. We got married uh, deep in West Virginia. Um, it, we had camping, and it rained, and it didn't rain. and It was a wonderful day. Uh, we had... A small crowd. I was limited on the amount of people I was allowed to invite, as was my wife. So we tried to keep it um, to a, a reasonable number, especially considering that you had to hike about three miles in, or if you're Dan, hike more than three miles in. So you got lost. Um, we no, yeah, we there was a definitive choice to walk along the power lines to get to your yeah. camp. Right? I'm just not sure it was quicker. It wasn't. Thanks, Austin. Missed you. Uh, that's nice of you Austin alright any more questions about what we do Gabe videos yeah. oh that's a good one how did you get so handsome it was a lot of hard work I'm not gonna lie it's a lot of hard it's about saying no you can't always you can't always eat a bunch of pizza but that's a much better answer than what I would have said. I would have said my mom and dad did all the work. 
Oh, yeah. I don't know. They did a decent amount of work for me, I guess. Yeah, but yours, yours is much funnier. I'd appreciate that. Got jeans. Yeah. A lot of, like, hair products. You got to, because this thing does not, it, it gets rained in, honestly. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, if that's all the questions, we uh, really appreciate all you guys tuning in. Yeah. So that was fun. And uh, if we're always an open book. If you have more questions, feel free to email, DM, whatever, however you want to get in touch. Yep. We're available. Yep. Hope everybody's staying safe and staying six feet apart. You go outside. Stay home. Yep. Stay home. All right. Have a good night. See you, man. See you, Dan. Good talk. I'm this thing. It did the X.